Stay all day, Doug. Now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there, bowl in authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to occur. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is a go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, we need masculinity more than ever. And of course, I'm going to tell you all about that in a minute. But first of all, let me tell everyone, I have a daily motivation text message that I send out free of charge every single day to everyone who's in my text community. This message is guaranteed. Yes, I guarantee that this message is going to do three things for you. It's going to keep you focused, it's going to keep you sharp, and it's going to keep you on point for the day that is in front of you. So if that sounds like a recipe for what you're looking for, all I need you to do is text me at my text number, which is the following, 305-384-6894. And every day when I send out the daily motivation, because you are in my text community, you will be receiving that message every single morning straight to your phone free of charge. Secondly, if you have not yet claimed your free copy of my book called The Mirror of Motivation, The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline, this book is all about making sure you answer the question of who you need to be as an individual so that you can do the things that you've been planning on doing such that you can achieve the outcomes you want to achieve in life. If that sounds like a recipe for your success, go claim your free copy of my book, The Mirror of Motivation, by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. Again, that's mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is free. All you're going to do is cover the shipping. And the third thing, all you business people, professionals, if you're serious about making more money in your business and you understand that it's going to take more than just working harder or uh, miraculously making yourself smarter and you understand that you probably those probably aren't even your issues right now I'm going to tell you that I'm a big systems person if you're interested in putting systems and processes and strategies in place that will do the heavy lifting for you so that you don't have to do all the hard work yourself then what you need to do is go to workonyourgame.net. I have a free training there. It's 45 minutes long. Go take that training. It's completely free. At the end of that training, after I explain to you how I help people do this, there'll be a link there where you can actually schedule a call with me and we can talk about how we can implement this stuff into your business right now, today. Again, that is at workonyourgame.net. So now with all those out of the way, let's talk about today's topic, which is why we need masculinity more than ever and i just want to let you know you all know just as a side note uh for some reason for some unknown reason the temperature dropped in miami last week down into the it was like 63 degrees one day last week and i got a a, a slight head cold and now i got like this cough i'm not sick but i got like this cough so <clears throat> if i had to clear my throat a couple of times or cough sometimes in the middle of this episode i'm sure the coughs will get cleaned up by nico so you probably won't hear them but if i had to clear my throat a little bit or my voice sounds a little scratchy that's just because of that some reason some unfor unforeseen reason that i may have to i may have to sue miami because i didn't sign up for this coming here anything under 75 degrees is unacceptable but anyway that happened so just in case y'all, you might notice that in my voice, if I cough or I gotta take a couple sips of water in between my talking, that is the reason why. So getting into this topic, because that none of that is gonna stop the show from continuing to move forward. I thought of this topic because I saw in the NFL, which is a sport that I follow what is going on, but I don't follow it you know, as closely as I would, let's say something like basketball. When I see NFL games having their physicality legislated out, it's a big thing happening in the NFL now. Now they have new rules where they're penalizing the defensive players if you hit the quarterback too hard for what they call it, roughing the passer. As a that's a, a penalty that's always existed, but now they're calling it a lot tighter. Where just you no, know, if the quarterback if just like the quarterback got hit too hard, then they're throwing a penalty flag. Now they have penalties for they call it targeting if the defensive player just hits the offensive player in such a way that it appears that the defender led with their helmet and hit with the helmet before anything else even if it wasn't intended but if if that's what ended up happening then there's a penalty for that and there's all kinds of new rules that the nfl is instituting or just more stringent ways of uh, enforcing these rules in nfl games and i see this all being all the physicality of the game which is really what makes the nfl the nfl is being legislated out and i'm asking why are they actually doing this because 
the men who play football in the NFL, last I checked, there are no women playing in that league. The men are bigger, faster, and stronger than ever. They're more athletic and more talented than ever, ever. But the rules are making the game more soft, or at least they're trying to. And again, there are penalties now for the kind of hits that we used to celebrate. Any of you who's old enough remembers it used to be this TV show called NFL Films. You know, NFL Films, they would have segments on the show where they would literally single out the best hits, the best clips of people just getting messed up and hit hard by defensive players and laid out by defensive players. And we celebrated this stuff. And the NFL itself, as an entity, used to sell videotapes of the best hits, the hardest hits in the NFL, or Sports Illustrated would give it out as a free bonus to go with your subscription to Sports Illustrated. The best hits of the past season, or you know, the best, yeah, just players just getting fucked up, getting hit in football. And the, the, the thing is this, this is what we actually like about the sport. One of the reasons that people watch football, one of the reasons that we watch boxing or MMA, or any type of combat sport that is based around the concept of hitting people as hard as possible is because we like seeing the, <clears throat> the danger that the participants are flirting with in hitting each other so hard in these sports. So why would sports like the NFL, boxing it hasn't really gotten to boxing just yet, actually it has in some ways, but why would a sport like the NFL want to soften up their game? Today I'm going to tell you why, as because even though this episode is not about football, it is all being reflected in larger society, and I'm going to tell you why we need to fix it. And by the way, if you haven't seen my series on the feminization of sports, go listen to episode 2200. I did a six-part series where I explained how sports is being feminized and how this is a bad thing, not only for the male sports, but also female sports. Feminizing sports, period, is not a good idea, even for female sports, because sports itself, the actual act of sport, is a masculine entity sports is a masculine game even female sports females playing basketball is a masculine game and i explained all of that and why even females who play female sports don't want sports to be feminized go listen to episode 2200 where i explain that all out so let's get into it point number one today's topic once again is why we need masculinity more than ever in larger society again the nfl and sports is just a microcosm of this number one first of all let's put the blame where it belongs the blame is on inclusion Inclusion. Everybody's familiar with that phrase, right? Because we've talked about that. I talked about it a few times. In episode 2199, I told you why DIE, diversity, inclusion, and equity, is the enemy of high performance. Then I told you in episode 2308 how to actually do inclusion the right way. I did a three part series how to do diversity, then inclusion, then equity. How to do each of them the right way as opposed to how they've been do being done now. Episode 2308 was specifically on the concept of inclusion. But inclusion is the culprit for why we need more masculinity in life these days. I told you about the DIE thing already, but here's what's happening. The NFL, the NBA, and every other place that used to be for just one type of person, usually a masculine man and the women who loved watching masculine men do masculine things. Now, you know what these places are trying to do? Like the NFL and the NBA, you know what they're doing now? <clears throat> They're trying to open their doors and be more inclusive so that everyone can participate in spirit, if not participate in fact. That's what they're trying to do. The NFL is trying to make themselves more um, acceptable or making themselves more open so they can more often include more feminine energy in terms of like their, I guess their fan base or the people who are watching it and have something to say about it. They want to feminize it so that the feminists or anyone in the LGBTQ community, because the NFL has embraced that as well, they want those people to feel like they can participate in football. Not participate like playing, but participate by watching the games. And these people bring a different type of energy than the masculine energy. This is simply what it is. I want you to understand something, folks. This is not how life works. Life is not supposed to be inclusionary in every single space. In life, there are certain places where you simply have to earn your way into the room. And there are certain places where not everybody is allowed in a room, and that's the way it's supposed to be. See, what makes certain rooms valuable is the fact that not everybody can be in them. The value of something goes down when everybody has access to it. That's why participation trophies are nonsense. In our world today, there are many people who have made 
compelling arguments that everybody should have, quote, a seat at the table, close quote. Anybody ever heard that phrase, everybody should have a seat at the table? I disagree with this concept. Everybody should not have a seat at the table. All right, that's why we have a table, because not everybody can sit down. All right, how big does the table have to be for everybody to have a seat there? Remember the game Musical Chairs? <clears throat> when you were a kid, did you ever play Musical Chairs? How do Musical Chairs work? The whole point in the game is, well, let's first explain how Musical Chairs work. Just in case any of you never played it before, look it up on YouTube and you can see an example of how Musical Chairs plays. Basic, the basic example of the game is there are a certain number of chairs, let's say there are 10 chairs, but there are 11 participants. The music plays and all the kids just walk around the chairs. When the music stops, everybody runs and grabs the chair as quickly as possible. But I just told you there are 10 chairs and 11 people, which means once everybody grabs a chair, one person will be left out without a chair. Whoever doesn't have a chair is out of the game. You're out. They're kicked out. Now we remove a chair. So now we have 10 participants and nine chairs. And we do this all again, another person gets kicked out. And we keep doing it over and over again until we're down to one chair, only one person is in the seat, and they're the winner of the game. This is the way that it works. This is the way life works. Life is like a game of musical chairs. The whole point of the game is that eventually a bunch of people are going to be excluded. And the game was fun. You know why musical chairs was fun? Not because you always won. I don't know anybody who was in, I don't know any, any such thing as a professional musical chairs player. But the reason why the game was fun is because it was competitive. And that's the way life is. Life is competitive. The value of a trophy is that it's just like musical chairs. Everyone keeps getting eliminated till there's only one left. Right? Isn't that how it works? Isn't that how the NFL season works? There's only one Super Bowl trophy. The NBA, one trophy. Soccer, one trophy. There's only one trophy in boxing. There's one belt, or at least in the different you know, weight classes. One belt. The trophy is valuable because not everybody can get it. The stage is valuable because there's an audience of people watching the people on the stage. If everybody was on the stage, if you went to an event <clears throat> and all the people were on the stage and nobody was sitting in the audience, does the stage matter anymore? If you were on the stage and there were a thousand people on the stage and nobody sitting in the audience, would it matter that you were on the stage? Of course not. The stage doesn't matter anymore when there's no audience. If you go to an, if the stage is valuable because there's an audience and if everybody is included in something, this is what the inclusion part of diversity, inclusion, and equity stands for. If everybody's included, well, what's the point? What's the point of even doing the thing? It has no value. What society is trying to do, and this is not everybody in society because I'm part of society too, but what society is trying to do, certain people, they're trying to include everyone in everything. And the problem with doing this, I mean, it's a noble cause, is that you want everyone to feel like they can participate in something. It's a noble cause. On a gen in a general sense, in a vacuum, this is a good idea. You want everyone to feel like they can be involved in everything. You want everyone to feel like they can be anything and do anything that they want. This is a, a great Sesame Street cartoon, Saturday morning cartoon type of idea. But in actuality, this does not work. What it does is water down everything that is valuable when you make it accessible to everybody, especially when they don't have to earn it. And what makes things valuable is the fact that people can be excluded. Exclusion is what we need. I did a whole episode on that. What episode was that? <coughs> episode 2170. Why we need sameness, imbalance, and exclusion, which is the exact opposite of diversity, inclusion, and equity. We need exclusion, imbalance, and sameness in life because that's what makes those things valuable, the fact that not everybody can get in the room. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is why we need masculinity more than ever. And all of these things that I just talked about in point number one, sound like I was just talking about inclusion. I was ragging on inclusion, which I was. I hope you got that point. But the reason why I brought that up is that masculine energy is, is it leans towards exclusion. It leans towards not everybody can win. It leans towards competitiveness. It leans towards understanding I'm putting myself in a position where I know I could possibly lose, but that's the fun of it. That's what masculine energy is interested in. I'm a man, I can speak to this. Any men who are listening to this, who are masculine, you can speak to this. We like this. Even when we don't participate in it, we like watching it. We like seeing things where we know somebody's gonna lose and we know somebody's gonna win. We are interested in that. And some of you women who are listening to this, you are interested in this as well. Those of you who understand that there is a difference between feminine energy and masculine energy and that we don't want them all mixed in together. 
We shouldn't make it one type of energy. We don't need everybody included. You all understand this. And this is what, when things are run by, organizations and entities are run by and run with a, with a leaning towards masculinity, we do these things. But when the leaning is going more towards feminine energy and femininity, then we get things like trying to include everybody because that's what feminine energy more leans towards, trying to get everybody involved instead of saying, look, everybody ain't making it. Masculine energy says everybody ain't making it. Feminine energy says, well, let's figure out a way to include everybody. All right, you see the difference between the two? Point number two. The topic, once again, is we need masculinity more, more than ever. Number two, a woman's priority, generally speaking. Again, I'm not saying every woman thinks this way. A woman's priority is safety. That's a woman's number one priority. I want to be safe. I want to be secure. I want everything to be taken care of. That is a generally a woman's uh, energy. A man's priority, generally speaking, is that we like flirting with danger, we like competing with other men and who are doing the exact same thing as us. We like putting ourselves in positions where it looks like we might lose and we're going to fight like hell to win, to prove that the situation can't beat us, to prove that that man over there on the other side of the line is not better than us. We like that. It is our nature as human beings that women are this way and men are this way. And that's why we have men and we have women. And that's why men and women are not the same. That is why there is a balance between feminine energy and masculine energy. And that's why a man cannot do everything a woman can do and a woman cannot do everything a man can do. That's why there are two different ones. That's why we have men and we have women. If they were the same, then we wouldn't have men and women. Right now, femininity is dominating the uh, societal conversation. And the proof of this, one point of proof of this, is in the rise of what we call safetyism. Anybody know what safetyism is? You heard of it? If you haven't heard of it, just think about the word. What does it mean to you when you hear the word safetyism? What, is, what exactly does that mean to you? Safetyism is, in the book, The Coddling of American Mind, this is the first place that I heard anybody use the phrase, it is where the authors in a book describe safetyism as a culture or belief system in which safety, including emotional safety, whatever the hell that means, has become a sacred value, which means that people are unwilling to make trade-offs demanded by other practical and moral concerns. People don't want to make any kind of trade-off that will put their safety in any form of danger. But understand, this is not a normal this is not a normal way that a man thinks. Masculine energy doesn't think this way. I'm okay with risking a little bit of my safety in order to get the glory. All right, that's why we have football. That's why players put on pads and helmets and put themselves at risk at smashing into other men at full speed for the glory of winning the trophy. This is why boxers get into a boxing ring and allow themselves to get pounded on by other men for the, the possibility of winning that championship belt. Safetyism goes against the ethos of what these very things are about. And what safetyism does is it makes people feel the need to make everything more safe, less dangerous, and reduce the risk that anybody involved could possibly fail, get hurt, lose, or be or feel excluded. See, as though those feelings come into it too. Because see, safetyism not only includes physical safety, which generally I generally don't have a problem with physical safety to a to a certain point. Now, if you're playing in the NFL, listen, you are waiving all rights to physical safety, all right, because you decide to play football. You get in a boxing ring, you are waiving your rights to physical safety. Now, in general life, I'm okay with people wanting to be physically safe. I want to be physically safe for the most part. But emotional safety, oh, fuck that. Throw that out the window. All right, these all have fingerprints of feminism all over them. But the thing is, they're not new. See, 20 years ago, women had the same desires for safety and men had the same desires for flirting with danger. And what happened 20 years ago, though, if a woman popped up and tried to say, well, we got to make this thing more safe. People shouldn't have hurt feelings. People shouldn't feel like they can lose. We got to protect people's emotions. If a woman said that 20 years ago, what would happen is a masculine man will tell that woman to shut the hell up, stay over there with the women so us men can go over here and do what men do. That's what would happen 20 years ago. What has changed is now we have this concept of inclusion where now the women have infiltrated men's spaces, specifically their minds, with men's explicit permission. And now we have this nonsense as a result. I don't blame women for this. 
all the women who are listening to the show, I don't blame any of you for any of this. I blame the once masculine men who have allowed their testicles to be removed and handed to them and handed them over to women to allow this to take place. That's what's actually have happened. So when you saw everybody wearing a blue surgical mask for a year, even though there's a note on the box that says, this mask does not prevent the transmission of any airborne disease. It literally says that on the box of the mask, but people are wearing them anyway. And you got your kids wearing masks at school for no reason. When you see the NFL legislating the hard hits out of the game, when that's the very point of the game is to hit people as hard as you can. It, all of this is a result of the feminization of our society. And I want you to understand, femininity has its place. All masculine energy wants a feminine balance, but femininity has its place. Its place is not everywhere. There's places where it belongs, and it's to stay out of the places where it doesn't belong. The problem is men have stopped gatekeeping where masculinity belongs and femininity ends. They stopped gatekeeping that. They've allowed gatekeeping that. They've allowed the femininity to infiltrate masculine spaces, and now we got this shit going on. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is why we need masculinity more than ever. Number three. It has been indoctrinated into society that a man speaking up and speaking for masculine principles, like I'm doing right now, that that person is somehow not being inclusive enough or not being nice enough or somehow being harmful, quote unquote, to anyone who is being excluded by such conversation. Well, I want you to understand something. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. See, if I say something like, look, this is places for, if you get in, if you come into this boxing ring, there's a possibility you're going to get your damn head knocked off. You're going to get beat up. You're, you're going to have a bloody nose and a black eye and a busted lip because that's how this sport goes. And somebody pipes up and says, well, Dre, we don't want anybody to be, we don't want anyone to be hurt or harmed by what happens in this boxing ring. I say, well, get the fuck out of the gym because that's not what this is for. That's not what this sport is. If you come in this gym and you step in this ring and you put gloves on, you might get your damn head knocked off. That's the game that you're signing up for. If you don't want to sign up for that, Get the hell out of here. That's what masculine energy is supposed to be saying. And I'm not, I'm just using the boxing ring as an example. But there are many spaces in life where this is exactly how it's supposed to work. Anywhere where things are competitive and people are competing for an outcome, and this is not just in sports, this happens in business, it happens in relationships. People compete for the best woman. People compete for the most eligible man. There's competition and not everybody's gonna win. And it is not, and to call it rather, to call it hurtful or harmful to the loser because they're in a position of losing, it looks like maybe they are hurt. All right, maybe they do feel harmed because they lost. Okay, you can feel hurt when you lose. That's all right. What are you going to do? Complain about the situation? Or we got to legislate and change the whole, change the rules so that nobody can feel hurt or harmed? No. You got to show up and get better. When I was in, I believe I was in second grade, let me tell you what happened. When I was in second grade, somehow I ended up trying to run for one of the offices at my elementary school. We had president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. I don't know where this idea came from. I won't blame my mother for this. I think she came up with the idea that I should run for school treasurer. Now, I'm in second grade. The school went from first grade to fifth grade. So I ran for treasurer. I did not win. I remember coming home after I didn't win, and my mom was asking me about what happened with, in the election. And as I'm explaining, I started crying. My mom was like, well, why are you crying? I was like, I'm crying because I didn't win. Because I was upset that I didn't win. I was more embarrassed that I didn't win. I wasn't expecting one. I was more embarrassed that I didn't win than I had run and not won. And I don't remember what she said. You know, she tried to do mom stuff and make me feel better about the situation. But it's not like she came up to the school and said, hey, we should change the election process so that nobody will feel hurt or harmed by the fact that they lost the election. All right, this is the way things work. All right, when you go get into an election against another person, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. It's a zero-sum game. Not everybody can win. Sports is a zero-sum game. There are many areas of life that are zero-sum games. They are not infinite games where everybody can win. There are some areas where not everybody's going to win, and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. I remember I was doing this. I was doing this. Um, it was like a, uh, what was it? It was like a, how do I even describe it? Some kind of program. So this guy named Simon Sinek, some of you may be familiar with him. He wrote a book called The Infinite Game. And his book is all about, alleged, apparently, I didn't know, I had not read the book. I still have not read the book to this day, but apparently his book is all about how you can set things up in your business or organization such that nobody feels like they have lost. 
This is, generally speaking, this is not a knock on Simon Sinek. I like Simon Sinek. This is, generally speaking, a feminine idea. Nothing wrong with a man having a feminine idea. All right? I'm not saying anything's wrong with him because he had this idea. But the reason why this got, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I was doing an event for their organization, not for Simon himself, but his organization. And one of his, one of his guys who works for him and does like speaking gigs on Simon's behalf. Basically, this guy does speaking gigs and teaches Simon's content. He came into a email thread that me and him and some of his other staff members had going on. And he was looking at the material that I was going to speak about. And he was suggesting to me that I make some adjustments to my material because I was taking material from my own framework, the kind of stuff you hear me talk about here on the show, like work, the work on your game framework. He was telling me how I should make changes to it because it didn't reflect what the infinite game was about. He, it was actually basically the antithesis of an infinite game because he was explaining, well, you're talking about things where people can possibly lose. What well, infinite game is about how everybody can be successful and everybody can win. I'm very, very much bastardizing and pa paraphrasing the conversation, by the way. But I have this all in email, by the way. This did happen. And he's telling me this, how this is not reflective of the infinite game. And I told him in no uncertain terms, and this is not exactly what I said to him, but I'm telling you all this the way that I'm thinking about it right now. Like, listen, I don't give a fuck what is in Simon's book because I got my own books. I don't care what his framework is. I have my own framework. I'm not here to teach his shit. I'm here to teach my shit. All right, you teach his shit. I'm teaching my shit. And if y'all got a problem with my shit, then I'll take my shit elsewhere. But you're not going to tell me how I'm going to talk about my material. And long story short, he backed down and he shut the hell up. And I taught my material the way that I wanted to teach my material. The whole point is some places in life are not infinite games. Sports is a finite game. And I explained to him. I come from the sports world. In sports, everybody can't win. All right, in sports, you go against the other team, somebody's going home a winner, somebody's going home a loser, period. All right, and that ain't changing. It better not change, or sports itself will cease to be what they are. So this is the way it's supposed to be, folks. Not everybody can win, and that's how we want it. Masculinity is for masculine people. And what that means is some people get excluded from those conversations because everybody ain't masculine. How many women do you see playing in the NFL? So if a man gets his head knocked off in a football game or a boxing match, he knew he was signing up to get his head knocked off in that football game or that boxing match. Ask any player in the NFL or any professional boxer who you ever meet or have heard of, did you know that you were signing up for possibly getting your head knocked off when you got into this sport? I guarantee you everybody's going to say yes. It's also why we like watching it. If you're not signing up for it, you like watching it because it's interesting. The chance that that might happen is what makes it entertaining. See, the thing about life is, folks, we don't need safetyism. We don't need to make life safer. We don't need to lessen the chances that anybody can get hurt physically or emotionally. Life is inherently dangerous. And there's no number of rules that you can create or laws that will legislate danger out of life. That is impossible. There will always be a struggle between feminine energy and masculine energy when it comes to pushing for safety versus pushing for the opportunity for danger. Again, this is not a new challenge. What's changed is, right now, masculinity is getting its ass kicked by femininity. It's not that the battle just appeared out of nowhere. The push for more acceptance of the expansion of this whole feminine slash LGBTQ agenda in the workspace to our children and in many other places has a good amount to do with this as well, but I'm going to leave that topic for another day. As long as people, no matter what your background, as long as people are sitting around and allowing this to continue, and this is only going to get worse, but that's why I'm speaking up about it. It's just to make sure that all of you who are probably noticing this, maybe you notice it in a subtle way. I'm making it more conscious for you all, because if nobody speaks up about this, it's just going to keep expanding. And if nobody pushes back, it's going to keep expanding. All right, that's what's happening already, and it is going to get worse. All that said, let's recap today's class, which is why we need masculinity more than ever. Point number one. The culprit of this is inclusion, which I've talked about in several episodes of this show. I told you that DIE is the enemy of high performance because it is uh, basically telling people that your level of performance is not the thing that we're going to measure you by now. We're going to measure you by making sure that everybody feels included, everybody feels equal, and that we're diverse in our outcomes. Well, that's not the point. The point is we, give, we reward the best people, not we reward the most diverse people. But again, 
If y'all sitting around watching this happen, it's just going to keep happening. The value of anything in life, folks, is how exclusive it is. That's why trophies are so valuable, because there's usually only one, or at the most three, and you got 100 competitors, not everybody can win. All right, that's exactly how musical chairs work. Not everybody can win. Point number two, a woman's priority is safety, a man's priority is flirting with danger and competing with other men who like to flirt with danger as well. It is our nature as human beings. Right now, femininity is dominating in society. That's why we had a rise of safetyism. Everybody trying to make everything safe, make sure nobody can be hurt, lose, to feel like they are failed or to be excluded, nobody to be emotionally hurt or physically hurt. But this is all bullshit. All right. We want to put ourselves in line to possibly get hurt. We want people to get in a position where they could possibly fail. That's what actually makes competition entertaining is that not everybody can win and is what brings the best out of everybody as well. Number three is being indoctrinated to society that a man speaking up and speaking for masculine principles is somehow not being inclusive, not being nice or being harmful to other people. Well, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. All right. If somebody's trying to take my spot, I want to harm their ability to take my spot. I don't want to harm them as a human. I want to harm them as a competitor because they're trying to take something that belongs to me. That's the whole ethos of what competition is about. We don't need to make life safer or lessen the chances that somebody can get hurt physically or emotionally. Life is inherently dangerous. There's nothing that we can do that will legislate the danger out of life. And we need to understand that the struggle between feminine energy and masculine energy will always exist. But right now, masculine energy is getting its asses kicked simply because masculine energy is not stepping up and playing its fucking role. So as long as this is allowed to continue, it's only going to get worse. And this expansion of the feminist slash LGBTQ agenda at work, at schools, and in many other places oh, is going to keep coming. And there's, that's a whole other conversation that I'll talk about maybe on another day. But with all that said... Text me to get my daily motivation message free of charge straight to your phone every single day. My number is 305-384-6894. And go to workonyourgame.net, get access to my free 45-minute training, five steps, increase your revenue and business without having to work yourself into the ground. That is completely free. Just set aside 45 minutes of time. That's at workonyourgame.net. Work on your game. Dre, all 